Hello, my friends. My name is Julian. I'm a tech truck educator with the Perot Museum of Nature and Science, and I'm here to show you guys how to build your own craft stick catapults. Now, before we go into the building portion of this video, I'm going to cover a few science concepts related to simple machines and physics. Let's go ahead and dive right in. So when you think of the phrase simple machine, what do you guys think of? You might be thinking of a example of a machine like a car or a fire truck or maybe something like a computer, which are all examples of machines. But almost certainly, if you were to take apart any of those machines, you would find different types of simple machines within those bigger, more complicated machines. So there are actually several different examples of simple machines. We have a screw, uh, we have an inclined plane. So if you've ever been to a building that has stairs, but there also might be some kind of ramp right next to it, that is an example of an inclined plane. There is also the pulley. So if you've ever walked into or ridden in an elevator, that takes you one from one floor to another. There is a pulley system that actually lifts that whole elevator up. We also have a wheel and axle, which if you've ever seen a some kind of vehicle like a car before, then certainly you have seen an example of a wheel and axle. When we also have a wedge. So if you've ever helped your parents in the kitchen and you've seen them chopping up vegetables, they use a wedge in order to accomplish that. So either a knife or some kind of chopping tool are examples of wedges. Today, in particular, we are going to be talking and covering the lever. So when you look at it, you might recognize it. If you've ever been to a playground where they have a seesaw, that is an example of a lever. So there are several components of our lever that we will see when we build our catapult. So we will have a beam, which is that rigid plank that goes across a fulcrum. That is going to be the part of the lever that the beam will sit on top of. And then we will be exerting some kind of force in order to actually make the things in our catapult fly. Going back to our simple machine, you might wonder what is the definition or what is a machine? Well, simply put, it helps us do work. When you think of work, you might think about the homework that you have to do or chores they have to do around the house. You're on the right track, but there is a, a pretty uh, specific answer for what work is. Work is just the transfer of energy, and that occurs whenever you are able to move an object across a distance using force. So I was talking about a force um, when I was talking about our lever, right? But we might not necessarily know what a force is, or we might not know what energy is either, or we might know what energy is, but we might not be able to explain exactly what it is. So what is energy? It is just the capacity uh, for doing work. Pretty simple explanation, but there, what is not simple are all the different examples of energy that are out there. So I have a few, just a few, there are many different examples of energy out there. So listed, I have potential, kinetic, chemical energy, chemical energy, if you've ever seen a fire or maybe some kind of explosion or something like that, those are examples of chemical reactions where you have chemical energy involved. And then we have a kinetic and potential energy. So you might not uh, know, or you may not have heard of potential or kinetic energy, but we will talk about that in just a second. Now to answer what force is, it is basically just a push or a pull. Let me show you a few uh, examples of work and energy and uh, what a force is. I have a book and I have a 3D printed Pikachu on top of this book. So I'm gonna take my finger and I am going to start to push my Pikachu across the book. So right now I am exerting a 
force onto my Pikachu. And in doing so, I'm actually also doing work because I am moving an object over a certain distance by applying a force. Whenever I push my Pikachu back and forth, I am exerting some kind of energy in order to make my Pikachu go from one side to the other. We also were talking about potential and kinetic energy. I, if I take this bean bag and I were to hold it up into the air, there is something called potential energy inside my bean bag right now. So potential energy is stored energy. Right now there's a lot of stored energy in my bean bag, but then let's say I wanted to drop my bean bag several things are going to happen. The stored energy that I have in this bean bag is gonna start to go down, and then the kinetic energy, which is the energy of motion, is actually going to go up. So that stored energy will transfer into energy of movement. So I'm going to drop my bean bag, and two things happen. The potential energy went down, and then the kinetic energy went up, 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 all the way until right before it hit the floor. And then when it hit the floor, there's no more kinetic energy. We covered several different concepts, but I don't know about you guys, but I want to go ahead and jump into the building of our craft stick catapult. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with the building of our catapult. We will only need three things in order to accomplish our building. We will need some craft sticks, a plastic spoon, and then a roll of tape. I would recommend using masking tape. With that said, if you don't have masking tape on hand, you can certainly use almost any other kind of tape. I'm sure scotch tape would work, and certainly duct tape would work as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off by making a stack out of a few of our popsicle sticks. I'm gonna get four popsicle sticks. You don't have to use um, four, you can use just three if you would like, but I'll let you guys decide how many you would like to put on there. And then we'll grab some tape. I'm gonna tear off two pieces of tape. I'm just gonna stick it to the side of the table just to make sure that it is ready for me to grab when I need it. So I have my stack of popsicle sticks and I want to tape them together on top of each other. So I'm gonna get my two pieces of tape and I'm going to wrap some tape around one end and then I'll grab another piece and do it on the other end as well. So this is actually going to be our fulcrum. This will go in the middle and then this will go on top kind of like that. Almost looks like that seesaw. So we can put our fulcrum to the side once there's tape on either side of them. And then we are going to grab a spoon and we're gonna grab one of our craft sticks. I'm gonna put this to the side because I don't need it at the moment. And we want our spoon and our stick to be on top of each other like that. We will grab another piece of tape and then I'm going to take that tape and tape the ends of the popsicle stick and the spoon should end up looking kind of like that. So then you will take your fulcrum that you built and you're going to slide it in between just like that. For this step, you have several options. You can either use rubber bands uh, to secure the fulcrum and the uh, beam in place. You can use pipe cleaners, but I'm just gonna stick with my masking tape because all I'm really doing is just making sure that this fulcrum stays in place. So I'm going to take some tape and I am going to attach it crosswise, going diagonally one way and then diagonally the other way. So that actually looks pretty good. So I think I want to test this out. So I'm just gonna get a crumpled up little piece of paper. I would encourage you guys to use small, soft things like this. Don't shoot off any rocks or anything hard. And whenever you are launching your objects, make sure that you are not directing this towards parents, siblings, or pets. Got it? All right, we are going to launch it now. I'm gonna put my hand on the base here just to make sure that it stays in place. And then I'm going to pull down and release. Whoa, so you didn't probably didn't see that, 
but this went at least three feet in the air. So this looks already really looks good, but I think I want to try and improve my creation. So we're gonna go back to the to our engineering steps. Part of being an engineer and taking on an engineering project is to build whatever object that you planned out, but then also revise anything that you think could go better. So I think I'm actually gonna try something. I'm going to take my fulcrum and I'm actually going to turn it the other way. So I had it flat like that before, but I'm actually gonna turn it so that it makes my fulcrum, oh yeah, so you see how when I flipped my fulcrum like that, the spoon went up a lot higher, and so now I need more force in order to push this down in order to launch it. So before, the little piece of paper flew up maybe about between two and three feet in the air. Let's see how we do now. So I'll do the same thing. I'll put my hand on here and then lower it down. Now before I launch it, let's cover a couple of the concepts that we talked about before. Whenever I push this down, there is a lot of potential energy being stored in my object that I have in the spoon. And then whenever I release it, all that energy will be transferred from potential to kinetic energy. So when I let go, whoa. So that hit the ceiling. So I believe from the tabletop to the ceiling, probably between five and six feet. So definitely an improvement from our previous attempt at building our catapult. So this actually turned out pretty good. So I hope you guys had fun building your craft stick catapults. I certainly did. We covered a lot of different concepts today. We talked about energy, we talked about forces, and how it has to do with work, and how all of those different concepts tie into the craft stick catapults that we built today. Have fun with your catapults. Keep learning, stay safe, and talk to you guys soon.